Welcome to Adam CV Podcast. I am your host, Adam Samuel. Today, we are talking about America's Got Talent Season 14, Episode 4, uh, another audition episode. Uh, I am back in my regular studio, uh, which is much better. Uh, I enjoyed being on the road, but I'm happy to be back. And uh, joining me for this discussion is my co-host, Eric. How are you doing today, Eric? I'm doing good, all things considered. I'm a little bit disappointed that last week's episode, I had a lot of really funny edits put in there, and then they never rendered properly, and it kept like cutting the audio out. And after about an hour of trying, I'm like, screw it, it's not going to work. I'm just going to upload a regular raw episode. So I apologize for all the random references to sound effects that never came about. Um, I'm probably done with sound effects anyway. I might just put some titles on this one and see if that fixes it. But, yeah. So, sorry about that, everybody. Um, anywho, um, what did you think of this week's episode? All right, well, this week's episode, I actually only recently finished watching it. Um, Me too. I'm, I'm at this point in this season, Eric, where I'm – I'm starting to look back at what we've seen and I'm starting to see, think, where are we going from here? Because we, we've seen four episodes of auditions and I'm not seeing much to really hold on to. There's one or two acts, but for the most part, a lot of these are kind of forgettable acts. And I got to say for this season so far, I know I've been critical, but I'm going to say it. I think this was... Probably the weakest audition episode this so far this season. What did you think, Eric? Um, I agree it's the weakest this season, but there are still a couple acts I enjoyed watching. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to win from this episode, but there are a couple of enjoyable acts, I guess, kind of, sort of. There were a couple, I will say, there was one or two acts that I did particularly enjoy, but I, that's usually how the, the episodes go. But as a whole, like the, I feel like the bar has kind of been lowered. Like, we're still kind of checking all the archetypes that kind of fill out the show and i'm just where's the something different where's the kind of the the season 14 right now this season feels like season 13 12 11 there's nothing different where's that like the tape face the pip the magic dragon that like that wild card act that kind of it's something the karaoke to, act didn't do it for you the, the karaoke <laughs> act was the closest, I will admit, that came to that, and we will we will oh talk about. Oh my god, I was kidding. <laughs> you, you, oh my god, wow. I enjoyed the karaoke. Act. That's the lowering of the bar right there. <laughs> um, but what about you? What are your thoughts on kind of the season as a whole so far? We've now seen four episodes. There are two more audition episodes. Am I correct, Eric? Um. I don't know. There could be two. There could be three. At least there won't be four. <laughs> At this point, I'll take what we can get. I don't know. Um, I do also say I, I'm i trying to kind of keep more in touch with what more fans have, are also saying because I feel like I've been so critical of this season so far. <laughs> A lot of people on the, on the subreddit, there's some people who are pointing out that they add fake laughter and other noises to the show. Yeah. <laughs> Have have you noticed them doing that as well, Eric? I have not, but I've noticed that the auditions seem to be getting increasingly edited as seasons go on. Like we're using slow mo even more of these this year than I did last year. Yes, it's driving me crazy. I had a note on that. Almost every act had like a slow mo moment, and usually those are reserved for like the golden buzzers. But it's even then, it's stupid and terrible and annoying. It's kind of like the show's just dipping into cheese. Like, so far. Like, it's so cheesy. And the thing is, we talked about this a little bit in the pre-show, but has America's Got Talent always been this way? Like, I... I, I mean, yes, but... I don't know. I When I remember the auditions, like, usually there's some big moments. Like, even something like a Courtney Hadwin moment where there's that one... Aside for Cody Lee, there's no one else who's kind of the big story. Like... That season, last season, there were a number of contestants that were kind of blowing up. And this year, it's like just all pushed behind into this one contestant. And I'm just looking at the board thinking, who's going to – where's the competition? This is just going to be a victory march. Like someone's got to do something to kind of make it a competition. We're only seeing one round. I, I, I think there's still hope. Yeah, um... I, I don't know. I, I, mean, I, don't, I haven't seen everybody yet either. 
it's that is a good point. Maybe these two last weeks, I'm still holding I out mean, hope. The one thing that gives me hope is that the past couple of years they've front loaded all the talent in the first two episodes, and maybe they're not doing that this year. When did we see Shin Lim's audition? Episode one. Episode it was the first episode that they actually publicized. Really? It was, it was the first audition they publicized, yeah. Huh. Who was the first one they publicized this year? I don't remember. All right. Well, um, do you have any other any pre pre episode thoughts that you want to share before we kind of dive into the contestants? Let's just dive in. All right. So as we always do on Ad- on Adam's TV podcast, we're going to start going through all the contestants. We'll share some thoughts. Uh, so first up, we have uh, a lady who was I. I I don't even really know what to do. It, it reminded me of a real life human, well, sort of like uh, with living creatures, Rube Goldberg machine. Uh, it was, it was Melissa, very similar to that, yeah. It was Melissa Arlett. And I, I, how would you describe this talent, Eric? It was having a rat go through this like obstacle course type thing. Yeah. I, she's a rat trainer, I think, is what she is, which is, by the way, you have to have have a talent to do something like this. I will say, like, there it was that... undeniably a talent. I must have taken a lot of time. The problem for her is it won't be worth it because this won't win, win a million dollars in a million years. Yeah. You know, these, this is, we always have this act like a season. Like, there was, remember the chicken who played the piano? Like, there's, this there's is always better than that. This, this is, is what? Better, this is better than that act, but really, it's just as, un, just as unlikely to win. Hmm. I don't know. I, I did enjoy this act somewhat until there was one very awkward part where she... she Spread her legs? <laughs> a little... Was that the, the part? The mouse it? ran across. I was like, you overdid it. Like, <laughs> Yeah. It was a good act. It was cool. But uh, at that point, I was like, I was pushing. okay, this is a little strange. You have a, a little bit too close to a relationship with your rat. <laughs> <laughs> but until that point, like I said, it, it reminded me of like a... a with living creatures, Rube Goldberg machine. And for that, I thought it was cool. I did appreciate Simon saying, Howie, I know you have jokes right now, but don't do them. <laughs> <laughs> Would you, I, while I was watching this, I did enjoy, I can appreciate it as a talent. I was almost making the case that I was thinking a judge was going to probably buzz her for it. Would you maybe have buzzed this act? No. I wouldn't have said yes, but I wouldn't have buzzed it. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I probably would have honestly said no. But uh, it was – she's definitely a talented person. I just think this is a talent that is not viable for a win. Anything. Yeah. It's like a cool thing to see at like a circus. But, <laughs> yeah, basically. But I, this is and not – As like, a headlining act in Vegas, this, would not, this does not fit the bill. Can you watch this for an hour? <laughs> can you watch the little mouse like – I couldn't watch it for another – 30 seconds longer than it lasted so all right well let's move on to our next contestant uh ansley burns she is a 12 year old singer uh and she has like every contestant this season she's got a bit of a story and she i think is a little planty did, did you get that vibe too absolutely Continue. yeah <laughs> so she has this story she actually um gained the attention of carrie underwood uh can you explain yep. that a little bit eric I can't really, because I didn't really take notes on that part. But she, she heard a video or something was tweeted by Carrie. Was that what happened, or something? She has some connection. I don't think they ever like sang together, but they, she has that kind of name, and just that name is kind of maybe enough. And um, she comes on stage and she p- performs. I think it was, it wasn't listen. It was think by Aretha Franklin. It was definitely not listen. Yeah, it was. Um, think. What was I, think? I was thinking of something else. No, I was thinking of. R-E-S-P-C-T, which was, was that also by Aretha? No. Yes, that was. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and she performs it kind of with this, there's a very big uh, backing track, which I got to say, like, while she was performing, I didn't see a problem with it. Like, it didn't, like, Simon Cowell, while he was watching it, made this big deal that it was, it, like, swallowed her and it was all messed up. Uh, what, what were your thoughts on the performance kind of with the backing track? I wasn't blown away by it. Um, I didn't think it sucked like Simon didn't think it sucked. It was a little bit harsh. But then she sang a cappella, and that kind of changed the game for me. The thing is, I was kind of expecting, like, 
when she was doing it with with the backing track, I was thinking like, this is yeah, this is what I would expect from an America's Got Talent kind of act. But then they're they were kind of all building to this moment because Simon Cowell loves these things. He does it every single season where he'll stop a contestant, make them start over. Um, yeah, I will say when the as I feel with every performance, if it's a cappella, it, in the right hands, it could usually come out better. Like always, an a cappella performance has never had a really bad track record during oh, it has. a live I mean, it, performance. Yes. It has. You're right, it has not. So, like, I mean, good for her for doing for it, it but for me, I think this whole thing just kind of came across a little bit too contrived, too kind of, like, Simon Cowell had to have known something was going on with the backing track. I mean, absolutely. Having said that, she did really sing it well when she did a cappella. I was actually, I was really impressed by it. From a raw potential standpoint, I think she's one of the best singers this season. Really? I do. Do you think she makes lives? Definitely she makes lives. She was, she was, I was flip-flopping on her a couple of acts for my favorite of this episode. Uh, I was actually really impressed by the acapella performance. I didn't think she was the, well, <laughs> I can't even honestly remember most of the contestants from last season, the, the last couple of episodes, so maybe... Maybe she'll she's got a shot. Honestly, do you think? Uh, well, she's definitely making a live show. The question is, how, will she make the finale or not? Okay, I am a little worried that they probably will. Well, she's like a twelve year old. They're gonna like shoehorn her into the the this kind of bracket, the big songs. Um, I do worry that they're gonna maybe keep her in the the like the throwback kind of artists where they're kind of just pick the big diva ballads and there's kind of nothing really marketable there. You know what I'm saying a little bit? Yeah, Jet. Sometimes, but but no. But no, not really. Because Angelica Hale was very similar. Angelica Hale, they kept pushing her over the other ballots, and she's she's going to be doing pretty well I, now. I I disagree because I remember if I'm cor- rem- you can correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't she do a lot of Disney songs? Like I think that she wasn't so much like the throwback. She was more a it Disney. It was big ballads, is what it was. What did she perform? Like, she she was doing, like, oh, she did Girl on Fire. Fire. Like, she did, I think, Moana. Yeah. No, she didn't do a Moana. Who did? I Sabine Tam, did. I think, did, did. Was that the same season? Yes. Regardless, what I'm saying is that I don't want her to be kind of pushed into this bracket that will maybe make her a little bit old-fashioned. I would like to see okay. current songs. Anyway, uh, any other thoughts on her? Not really. All right, so let's move on to a contestant who I, I thought his name was SOS, which I thought would have been a really funny name for a, a magician. <laughs> but uh, his name is Sos. Is that, that's correct, right? Sos, I think, or Sauce. I forgot how you yeah. pronounced it. But... Like Sauce. Like, uh... yeah. um, and his parents were actually on a previous season of America's Got Talent. They made the live shows. I remember writing about them for someone. I think it might have been one, one of the websites I've written for over the years. Uh, they were a quick changing act, and I. Cr- do you remember their performances in the past, Eric? I do, barely, but I do. I just remember. I think at one time there was like a mishap, and someone messed up. Like, uh, don't think so. I think during the live shows, like, don't think it was them. There, there were a lot of like, the the quick changing acts are very similar. Like, it's a over identical. Yeah, they're literally the identical. Quick over and over and over again. They're quick and changing, it's a, you might say. And it's a, and it's a trick that everyone knows how it's done. Yeah, it's it's a pretty straightforward. But uh, this... honestly, the weird thing is that the parallel is that he also just did one trick over and over and over again. This guy. Yes. Um, and but he... the difference is, I don't necessarily know how this trick is done, and I know it probably takes a little bit more skill than the quick change does. So I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um. He like just to set the stage a little. He's a magician. He's a card magician in the. In a kind of a bit of a, like a more, uh, without, he, he's uh, Shin Lim a little bit without the table, if that makes sense. Yeah, basically. In the same vein. He's kind of not on the same level, but he's in the same kind of uh, pulling things out. But he, he does it kind of very uh, high energy. It's kind of like, a, it's kind of like a, I don't even know what the word to say is. It's like just a big, like uh, blood pumping performance. And he just kind of throws cards. He does all these things. He pulls them out of nowhere. The thing is, I will say, it did kind of get a little repetitive. Like, it was kind of the same shtick over and over. Like, I was looking for something different. 
Uh, some people I was also noticing um, were, were pointing out that maybe there might have been some editing going on. Like maybe he performed this twice. Was that something you were maybe getting getting a vibe from? I don't know. All right. Well, I enjoyed this act. It's in the top echelon of this episode. Um, but can, uh, Magic is a really – of all the acts this season, Magic is the one I think is the most full. Is that – is Full that... and unlikely to win as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do you think this this is a, an act that could win? No. Not. I was going to say not with uh, not on the same season with uh, Eric Chen. Not on the season after Shin Lim either. <laughs> Maybe you never know. I think he's got a shot of making uh, the lives, but from there it First might be the live shows possibly. The thing is, he needs to kind of switch it up because Card Magic what he was doing was kind of just one note. And I feel like with magicians, there's kind of two lanes that they go once they make the live shows. They do either the big production where they do the same trick over where it's like there's four boxes and one of them is going to explode. And I don't want him to fall into that vein. There's either that or there's like the bet, the other one, which is better. Like all acts like kind of, it's like a hurdle of the live shows. Like once if he walks on stage and there's four things on the table, like he's done. He's done, but maybe he's got some creativity. I want to see mm-hmm. a little bit of creativity here, but otherwise, he's one of the few acts I give a thumbs up. Okay. All right. Let's move on to uh, a contestant who, for a second, made me think I was watching last season of American Idol. Uh, it is Marcin Patsreleg. How do how do I pronounce this name? I I don't know if you pronounced it right. All I know is he's Alejandro minus the voice. Exactly. <laughs> he is... Except he's a better guitar player than Alejandro. I don't think he's as better. I think... Oh, he's better. No, Alejandro better. is really good. I don't know if he's... This guy's better. Really? I think so. I Does think he so. sing? <laughs> no, but that's Alejandro sing? I enjoyed some... Of, be nice to Alejandro. I enjoyed some of his performances. Uh, so this guy is... Um, he's another very clearly plant contestant of course <laughs> they're all plant. everyone this season is a plant like they shouldn't even just bought they shouldn't even bother holding like the open cattle calls edition because what's the point <laughs> did they bother i don't know i don't know but he is um he's he's a young guy and he performs uh a beethoven song um and he does it like all with the guitar and i will say it was impressive what he was doing but this did not feel like the song that he should be doing it with I was thinking, if you were doing this to a different song, I might have almost maybe considered hitting my golden buzzer. But honestly, for me, the the just the song choice of it was weird and jarring. What did you think? I don't I don't get what you're saying about four. I thought it was excellent, and honestly, I think it was better than most Alejandro stuff because, yeah, I'm gonna be nice, but I I really enjoyed this a lot. I also this was my personal favorite act of the night. Like I said, the closest thing I would come to giving it a golden buzzer, but I was just thinking the song choice was for me was a little jarring. And the fact that I don't think this could be a winning act as it's much not. as I, I, I would like it to be because it is really impressive. I, I think I mean, you, gotta, you gotta have I a think, singer. If he was a singer, this could be a winning act. The I'm fact that sure. he, what? I I think that they could put enough production and stuff around him to be like a Tokyo Myers type thing. He could, he could go far. I think the, the the way to do this is actually the exact opposite and to do no production and have it just be him. Like have the, the lights go down and it just be like a campfire thing. That's not going to win. I don't know. I, I, what, what did Tokyo – what was his last – Tokyo, Tokyo Myers. Myers, yeah. What did he do? How did he – he Wait. was all music. He had like choirs on joining him on stage. He had light shows. He was doing all sorts of different things with music. He was really impressive. All right. Well, any final thoughts on him? I Like I said, I really did enjoy him, though. I think he could go far. All right. Let's move on to <laughs> contestant that, uh, like I said in the past, there, it is rare for me to laugh for America's Got Talent comedians. If America's Got Talent comedian actually makes me laugh, that is a very good sign. And the next act actually got me to laugh. 
Uh, Andy Rowell. Uh, he is uh, his his whole shtick is that he's a singer, and uh, he he comes on stage and there's like a a karaoke machine, and he's performing a song that only has one word, and it's uh, the tequila song. What's the song actually called? I don't know. But uh, yeah, so he's just kind of standing there awkwardly with the mic as the karaoke machine is going, like playing the song, and then the at, the last, at the last second he says. Tequila. I I gotta tell you, I really love this because you know what this was? This was a peek into how Adam Samuel is going to get on America's Got Talent. <laughs> yeah. This is this could have been me. This is this brilliant. Been this this was I loved this act. I loved it. What did you think? Okay, I laughed once. The first time he did it. The first time he did the tequila thing and have the countdown, I thought that was funny. It went on too long for me. I will say... It was unbelievably stupid. I did laugh once. But it was Eric, unbelievably this could be your act. If you're on America's Got Talent, he got through. This could be you. Or me. This could... You could literally get... You could put an iPhone on stage, have it time out and have it cite tequila a couple times. And that's all you have to do. Hit play. The thing is, I will say I laughed for the two minute performance that it was. I feel like had it been three minutes, it might, it, it the joke went on for me just enough time. It went on too long for me. I, I totally disagree. I think it ended kind of perfectly. And the one thing I could say for him is that moving forward, he cannot repeat this act like this. He has to do something different. He's a comedian and he needs to do this. There's got it. I'm a little worried that we're going to get to the next round and that he's just going to be um, in one of the, you know, the, oh, the montage of deaths, of just course. doing the same shtick. That's exactly where he's going to be. And that's, what's going to happen. And that's just going to be all she wrote. I, I hope this guy's got some other, he's a comedian. He's got to have some other things in him. Like maybe, oh. In his next performance, he's like gonna decide he's a dancer, and there's gonna be some some shtick there. Like uh, it's gonna be I, I don't even know, but I cannot say that I I can't say enough how much I enjoyed this act. <laughs> okay, great, glad. It's so creative and it's so stupid. It was the closest thing to like a tape based moment for me. Okay, great. If he delivers a next uh, the next performance and he does something really good, there's a chance he might be my favorite. <laughs> Not yours, Eric? Nope. All right. Let's move on to Adem Dance Crew. Uh, one word, one letter away away from uh, my name. Uh, they uh, come on stage and they 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 seem to be like uh, I don't even know how to explain it. They're it's not so much a dance act as much as a like a kind of robotics. How how would you describe this act? I don't know how I would describe it. It was cool to watch though. Yeah, it reminded me that they they. they they come on stage. They're they're like wearing like Street Fighter outfit. Like I, yeah. it was really cool. Uh, and the the performance I will say was really like, I, like puppeteering. He was like kind of there was one guy. And he's it was like, very oh. cool. Yeah, very cool. I feel like we get one of these acts though every season. I don't know if they can win. I they can't. Probably not. But I enjoyed this act and I I remember them. I remember it like uh, coming away from it. So. What are your hopes for this act kind of moving forward, if you have any? I don't have very many. Um, I don't know how this act could be a winning act, but we'll see. Yeah, I think they're another act that maybe might get relegated to the montage of death. Oh, quite possibly. That's I remember problem. over open one of the live shows and get buffed then. That's how it is. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyway, uh, let's keep it going. Let's talk about Voices of Service. They are a singing group. Uh, they have this whole story where they were all people who served in the army or were active members, and they perform a very different version of Rise by Katy Perry. What are your thoughts on them, Eric? Um, the main male singer's voice kind of bugged me a bit. The woman, however, has a fantastic voice. And the harmonies weren't bad. So overall, it was a good BB plus performance for me. I'm going to say, I think the female singer in this group might have been my 
favorite singer of the entire season so far. Quite possibly. Uh, she is. The problem is she needs to be by herself. She is really good. Yeah. And not like just good, but like really good. Like yeah. I like very talented lady. I really thoroughly enjoyed this performance. Uh, the song was very different. It was kind of like switched up. Uh, I did like it because I didn't recognize it. Like it was, uh, it, it made when that happened. I like it because it didn't sound like Katy Perry. Is what you're saying? <laughs> I just like when I when I can hear a song, not realize what it is, and then maybe like a minute in it and go like, oh, and then it's like, oh, I see what you did, and then like mm-hmm. I, I appreciate that a bit more. So this was this was a strong act. I I would put them in my top three of the night, honestly. I would probably as well. If it was just that lady, like that lady was really good. If it was just her, she'd get my golden leather. Really? Quite possibly. She was really good. I would maybe have said the same. Uh, otherwise, um, you want to keep it going? Let's talk about David's golden buzzer from Britain's Got Talent and Honorarium. I read a YouTube comment that said that. Uh, which act? The flutist guy. The flutist. Uh, I. All right, let's let's just get into it. So this is uh, Brandon Kuprich. Uh, he is a flute player, and uh, I don't even know how to explain this act, Eric. Um, I'll explain it. So on Britain's Got Talent, this would have gotten David Williams' golden buzzer as a joke because it's – yeah. Honestly, he basically just like a stripper act. The problem was, I mean – I'm gay, and he's too muscular for me. <laughs> it was, like, hard to look at almost. And I'm like, ew. This was just a... What was, what was like... What was the what point was going this? on? Like, I have no was, idea what was going on. I, I did like that... Si- well, I didn't like that Simon hit the other contestants' buzzers. The other because, contestants' buzzers. What? The other contestants' buzzers? Uh, the, other, the other judges' buzzers. I Like, that should not be something that they're allowed to do. Mm-hmm. Do you think so? Yep. Uh, but I, this was just weird. This yeah. was this was just a that was like eh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Anyway, let's move on to let's 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 talk about the dogs. Uh, it's Dom Dominicus Dominiques. How do how do I pronounce this? Dominguez Poodles. Dominguez Poodle Review. They are a dog act. Um, and the Every act like this on this show, they always need to have, like, a few components. Like, something, like, a, a story, talent, like, kids. Like, this is this is a producer's, like, dream act. It's got everything they want. Uh, it's uh, a, fa- uh, a man and wife and his their two kids, and they do this routine, kind of uh, like a dog act. And the first thing I was, I, while I watched this act, I wrote down, like, as my early notes, this is a very adorable act but I don't think it could win. And then I stopped and I was like, wait a minute. We had a dog act win. <laughs> so maybe they could win. No, when Brent Scott Talent, they had two dog acts win. No, but they had an act in the same vein. Uh, we had a latte dogs who was... Was it, was it just as bad as this? I didn't think they were that bad. What did you think? I mean, I thought they were good, but the thing is, I've seen so many better dog acts in the past. So, and the reason is... For me, it's have an even remote chance at winning. A dog act can't just be trick, 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 trick. There has to be some sort of theming and story behind it. And this lacks that. This is every season. There's like, there's always the token dog act. Like, there's always the I one. Think it's a pretty weak one. Um, I think it was good. The thing that was a little bit bothering for me was I don't remember who it was, but when they were doing like the circles and like they were they were showing the things that the dogs were gonna jump through. They would the lady would like hold it high up and then lower it like really low and like help the dog through it. And I was like, it's not as impressive with how low you're going. Like uh-huh. you started out off all up here and then you're down here and it's like uh-huh. all the way. And that kind of took a little bit of the, the fun out of me. It was like you 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 got my expectations up and then it kind of you you pulled the rug away. Okay. All right. Well, I did enjoy them. I did. Do you think they can win? No. You know, I've said that in the past about dog acts, so I've learned not to, not to. Uh... Yeah, I don't think they can win though. All right. Well, let's move on. We've got only 
only two more acts left. These these cont- these shows like they're so quick to recap because they're just so the contestants are so little little of them. Uh, they are very warm. They are a French beatboxing crew. Uh, they uh, they I think they perform like a melody is a medley of songs, right? Sure. Uh, yeah, and they go through it. And um, one of the harshest things was uh, Simon Cowell says uh, he calls him like. He says something that knocks Pentatonix. That was stupid. Which, first of all, last I checked, Pentatonix had singers. Like, it was more than just, yeah, like, an acapella thing. Like, these guys didn't have a singer. It was literally just beatboxing and some Mm -hmm. guy saying, like, clap your hands. And, Simon, I would go see Pentatonix over them, like, ten times. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just, that's not even fair to, that's not fair to this act. To make that comparison. Yep. You're setting them up for failure. What did you think of them, Eric? Cool to watch once. Not the time wow. I need to see again. I feel like it's something you might see at a wedding. And then it's performed kind of oh, early in so, the ceremony. So I'm mean by saying it was cool to watch once. But it's like, oh, we just put them in a wedding band. I was going to say, there's something you would like see at a wedding. And then they, they leave for like the band to come play like the real music. <laughs> Oh, and you're calling me harsh. <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, I, I did enjoy their performance, but I, yeah, like you said, I one, one and done for me. Okay. All right. Well, let's move on to Detroit Youth Choir. They are every year. There's there's the dog act. There's the choir. Of- there's the the weird jokes. Like there's, uh, we're just checking boxes at this point, honestly. Uh, and uh, they – also, the choirs always get golden buzzers, right? Gen- generally, yes. Oh, um, they are – they they do have a nice story. Um, they're a bunch of kids. I think they're um, – I don't I don't know their ages, but they, they have a director who kind of uh, helped them, put them on the right path after they were – like I think they were um, – they were kids who were like troubled or they had bad family issues. And he kind of gives them a new life and an outlet for uh, music and creativity – and uh, they perform a weird rendition, I will say, very strange rendition of uh, the Macklemore song. Which was it, Can't Eric? Can't Hold Us. All right, Can't Hold Us. And uh, what did you think? Second golden, bu- second best golden buzzer act of the season so far. I don't even remember. Who, who were the other ones? There was Tyler. There was Cody. And then there was was Tyler, the eleven year old. Yeah. And then there was Howie's Golden Buzzer, who was terrible. It was Howie's Golden Buzzer. Oh, right, the singer. Uh, I don't remember most of these people, I'll be honest. It's hard I to remember. I think Cody is better than, the, than his choir, but this was pretty good. Yeah, this was – I actually, for me, I actually found this weird. Like, I, I was watching it. It, was, it just seemed like a weird song for a choir. Like, Not necessarily. I thought it was really cool, actually. I don't know. I like. I enjoyed their performance. Uh, Terry Crews is the one who gives them their golden buzzer, which kind of was built up the entire segment where he's oh, yeah, kind of, of making course. the connection to them. Like, um, it did kind of seem, as all golden buzzers acts kind of feel, a little bit Forced overbaked. Back. Yeah. Um, a little bit like uh, you're doing too much. America's Got Talent. Like, yeah, you, you, you're good, but you're you're getting just like the slow motion. Everything, all of the stops were pulled out for them, and they're good act but i've seen this story so many times and i know what happens with choirs like they make it through one round and then they're cut like top 20 like they go first top 20 week and that's just it like i know simon would love nothing more than a choir to win one of these shows problem is simon is one of like 10 people on earth who wants that so it's not gonna happen have we ever had a choir come close no, don't think so. I think that the furthest they go is like they make it to the semis. Like they make it one round. Well, on Burns Got Talent, they've had, they've had a choir basically every year in the finale, but no one's ever won. It's it's a cursed uh, – they, they talk about comedians being cursed, but I think uh, choirs are honestly more cursed because at least the comedian is like usually top two. Like yeah. the choirs, not so much. Yeah. All right. Well, that's kind of – the episode of uh, America's Got Talent. Overall, who would you say are the standouts? From this episode, obviously the Golden Buzzers stand out because of the pimpage. 
I thought I thought Ansley Burns was a great singer. Um, uh, I would give my last standout to Voices of Service, I guess. Uh, I enjoyed um, Marcin. Marcin, I don't remember the the guitarist. Who I oh really yeah, enjoyed. no, Marcin. Marcin's one of the standouts. Yeah, so uh, for me, I would put Marcin. The I would put um, uh, what was her Voices of Service just for that lady's voice because yeah, holy hell. Um, and the other one, Andy Rowell, just because I enjoyed it so much. Because even I'm though it was so dumb, it. and then Adem Dance Crew in fourth for me. Otherwise, I don't know what else to take from this episode. Mm-hmm. Well, so yeah, any... I know the title of this episode is what? Guess. I don't know. Tequila. <laughs> I love that act, Eric. I, it was the first time to get me to l- really, truly laugh watching this season. Like, that hasn't happened yet. All, none of the comedians have gotten me to laugh like this. I've gotten, I've gotten more laughs out of basically all the comedians this year except for this act. But... Tequila! All right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, I want to say that I am Adam Samuel. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Adam Soapbox or on my two websites, adamsoapbox.com and adamcvblog.com. I just released part three of a short story I've been working on. You can check it out on adamsoapbox.com. Uh, I have finished, just about finished that story, and I will hope to release the rest of it sometime soon. Where can we find you, Eric? EricAsher.com, EricAsher01 on YouTube, Eric underscore Asher on Twitter. And I'm seeing Katie on Sunday, so that should be really fun. Katie Perry, Katie, Katie Turner, 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 Katie. Katie Turner. Katie Turner. I'm going uh, to Philly. Really? Uh, are you? Uh, I'm driving and staying over that night. Yes, you. She actually released a new album. If I'm here, a new EP. Joy. EP. What did you think about it? Spectacular. Spectacular. It. It's really, really impressive. Well, guys, we will see you next time.